it's jerkbait time, and these minnows have produced some crackers. <laughs> So it's episode four of the lure challenge video and this one's a little bit more relaxed. It's springtime, the bait fish have come out and that can really only mean one thing. If you're new to these videos, the challenge for me is to grab a fish on every one of these lures that's in the lure pack featured in episode one. Now, so far in episode one, we covered the Z-Man Grub and the Slim Swim, both in the motor oil color in the two and a half inch size. In episode two, we looked at the Crank a crab. In episode three, we were on the flash minnow, but admittedly, we kind of touched base there, but then went back to a prawn style retrieve with the grub that seemed to smack them there. So today we're gonna to revisit the three minnow profiles that are quite similar in the pack, and one of those is gonna be the flash minnow, so we're gonna cover that off again. So the thing I'll say about the pack before we get into the details of these lures is that I do believe that the lure pack is very much a Australian estuary lure pack as opposed to the marketed black brim pack that it is titled with. But the pack does have three minnows in them. Now, like I showed you before, we have the MW62F by Echo Gear in a baitfish profile, darker top, lighter bottom, and a transparent silvery purple uh, see-through wide body. That bad boy is floating, which is not too dissimilar to this bad boy, but it's suspending. This is the Zipbaits Rig 70 SP. SP stands for suspending. And you can see it's missing a rear treble at the moment. I broke it off on the weekend, haven't replaced it yet. It's got some uh, marks around it because it has been beaten up. But again, baitfish profile, silver in nature across, lots of flashiness as it goes through the water. The third is the flash minnow. Prawn style pattern this time, and again, floating like the first lure I just showed you a second ago. All of these lures are gonna work similar in a twitch twitch pause kind of scenario, or maybe a roll or two stop where we're mimicking a injured bait fish going past the hidey hole of a larger predatory fish. Now, I'm sure many of you have used these lures before to a lot of success. I will admit the minnow jerkbait style of fishing is new to me. I've only really been doing it for about a year. I've got some really nice fish on it, but I'd be really keen to hear how you guys fish these and if there's any lures that I should really make staples in my lure box. I'd be interested to hear about them. Throw them in the comments. It might not just be me that learns from this, but I'm hoping some kid comes around these comments and has a bit of a canvas as well and can learn with us. The thing I really like about the selection of those three is that there's a fair bit of variability in there. One's a prawn style presentation, the other two a bait fish presentation, but one's floating and the other one is suspending. You might think of the suspending option as an advantage if you think that the fish aren't rising to the top and coming out of their hidey holes. The suspending option tends to stay in front of the face of the fish a little bit longer and thus entices the bite. So the weather here in Victoria this morning is basically four seasons in a day. It cannot decide what it wants to do. I had beautiful spring, a warm summer, a stormy winter with some horizontal wind, and a standard cold, wet, and gross autumn. Uh, it made things really tricky for not only fishing, but I'm also filming on the water so you can understand that all of my gear's getting fogged up and wet and salt spray all over it. And you can imagine that the audio is just a little bit too windy at times, so I'm gonna talk over those scenes when they pop up. Now, the plan was to just rotate through those as I felt like it, and as they caught fish, throw one rod away and then focus on the other two, and so on and so forth until I'd accomplished all uh, fish on all three. But first blood went almost immediately to the zip bait. You can see me taking off the hook keeper here for the first time and the cast goes in. It's a couple of winds and then a pause. Effectively, I'm on the shallow side of the bank. I'm throwing into the wind and I'm rolling the lure back at me. There's a bit of a pause there. I take another wind or two and as I take up that slack and move the lure away from the fish that's obviously looking at it, the fish strikes the lure. 
Got a tiny bit of nana drag, but there's really no need for me. There's a little bit of weed around, but I don't feel I need to turn it up a little. Let's tie, tie the fish out a bit. Now the fight went for a little while, but I ended up scoring a really, really nice tailor. I was super pumped with that fish. I reckon that was the biggest tailor that I've ever got. Up in New South Wales, I'm used to getting these little pesky things that just take my lures constantly. So uh, it was really nice to see something sizable. Now I kept using the lure along the edge here on the left and I fished up against the rocks thinking that there might be a fish or two hiding in that mixing water. But again, a couple of pauses and then this guy hit, number two. So that was tailor number two, another really good sized tailor. Good for fish cakes I hear, I've never really eaten tailor but I think I was really lucky not to lose the lure twice. So I decided to put it away and try something else for the moment. Now I noticed a fair bit of flow going on in the water so I thought, hey, there's some, some fish might be sitting in ambush at the mouth of the system that I was at. So that's exactly where I pedaled. You can see here, I've lost all the protection of the land around me and I'm getting owned with salt spray and, and you're getting a little bit of camera blur. But before I get critiques, I really do need to say from a safety perspective, I would not recommend going out in the conditions that I was out in. I'm out in my kayak every weekend, sometimes both days, and the kayak is the 360 Hobie kayak. So I can swing the nose in and out of the wind without a problem. I don't think I would have been able to fish on this day if it wasn't for that 360 drive itself. So a couple cycles through the Flash Mino and the NW62, no touches. And this is me trying to explain again what's going on, but the Rig 70 comes out, I throw it up onto the sand and then roll it back into the water. I pause it about a foot into the water off the bank and we get absolutely thumped. I give it a pause and bang, we're on. So that's 40 centimeter brim number one. We've started well and that rig 70 challenge is well and truly complete. It catches fish, questions. One down, two to go. All right, so now it's time for the Flash Minnow. Now the Flash Minnow made an appearance in episode three with Nathan Dowling and he got a stonker on it, but Today, it absolutely gets munched again. The lure gets thrown past the sand trench and wound back over a bit of an eddy. Almost broke a rod here as the net tries to flip over it and it wasn't a smart move for me to try and fix the situation by moving the net around. But that pause that happens while I'm doing that is the pause that this fish needs to crunch the lure. minute another 40 centimeter fish and we're two of those in the space of 20 minutes fish number two on the flash minnow challenge complete Now I'm fishing the MW62 at a similar depth to the other guys, two to three foot. The majority of the bank in the area that I'm fishing though is a sand bottom with patches of weed, slash and moss and a couple of tree branches sticking up here and there. I'm also hiding behind that knot that's got 25 to 30 knot winds that you saw a second ago and I'm kind of tucked in there safely. The cast goes out, again we get a pause, we move the lure again and bang, we're on. That would be the third fish over 40 centimeters. Now it didn't stop there. I got pelted with weather again, went around the corner. As soon as he sees a boat, he'll go for another run. 
and the footage starts to get pretty foggy because of all the changes in weather. The camera gear doesn't like it, so I'll only show you some small clips here. We do end up getting another good sized tailor on that NW62. So super stoked to tick these guys off. They're not my strong point, so I was really happy to do it. I will notice a couple of trends on every one of these catches though. So the cast went out generally over the target area. The wines were made to impart an action and then the lure stopped. It was probably stopped for somewhere between three to five seconds. Then in terms of that second movement, we had one wine to take up the slack and on that second wine where the impart, the fish seemed to smack it there on all occasions during the day. Now if you're enjoying yourself episode five, I am going to start to throw this bad boy and talk you through the how to use it. It's the Bent Minnow 76. This guy's the pink head. It's a surface lure that has been performing really, really well for me over the last few years. It's a popular lure and I think the market absolutely loves it. Now after that, we'll look at the double clutch and the 3B Berkeley. I've got to admit that 3B Berkeley, I am not confident at all. I don't know how I'm gonna get fish with this bad boy. Maybe I need to speak to some of the Berkeley guys and get a bit of help. So like I said at the start of the video, a nice stress-free cruisy video where we're working our way through the lure challenge. From me, stay safe. I'll see you next time.